Hello, welcome back to the channel of motorbike nonsense and the ultimate compensation machine that actually goes around corners is the Triumph Rocket 3R Storm Edition. So this is the new rocket. It's been updated to 2024. It's got more power. It's a bit lighter in the wheels. It's got new sexy paint scheme with what look like hand-painted coach lines. The knowing Triumph, they are hand-painted. You can see the brush strokes. That's gorgeous, but really, this is just an excuse to revisit one of the most loony bikes you can buy for 20 odd grand, about 24 grand now. These have gone up four grand since they came out because economy's it. Anyway, this is just my first ride of this bike. It's not a review yet. It's just a lunchtime wobble on 300 kilograms of British beef. Yes, I do like this. <laughs> I like it a lot already. And yeah, I know I kind of slated that Harley Sportster recently. This, this is how you do a cruiser properly with proper brakes, proper suspension, and oh, Jesus. <laughs> And a, a torque figure that makes you feel a bit sick. I'm not sure I should have stuck it straight in sport mode. But anyway, the headline figures for the Rocket Storm, which is what this new version is now called, is that it's got 9% more power. So it's up to 182 horsepower now. 225 newton meters of torque, which is a bit more than before. Well, that's all been done through new engine map, new tunes, nothing mechanical has changed on the engine. Still a two and a half liter triple, which is it's just as crazy as it sounds. Look, you can stick in sixth gear at 40 miles an hour. <laughs> and the U-boat engine whirs and you go towards the horizon to go and sink some civilian shipping and then start a war off the back of it. Anyway, this is one of life's best experiences. If you've not ridden a Triumph Rocket 3, you owe it to yourself, frankly, because it can be relaxed, it can be uh, enjoyable, it can be downright pretty scary, but it's always got your back. It's got Brembo Stylema brakes. It's got enough ground clearance to not deck out until you're really, really going a bit mad. It's, it's wonderful. It's just an expensive toy that is actually a joy to ride. Uh, yes, right, first impressions are it's got a cruisery riding position, this being the R, it hasn't got the foot forward controls of the GT model, and it's a bit more upright, but it's still a big old broad shouldered reach to the handlebars. It makes you feel like you've been down the gym and you can't put your arms close to your body like those young men you see walking out of gyms like they've got invisible beer barrels under their arms. You feel like that, which, to be honest, I quite like. It kind of puts you in the spirit of the bike, which is outrageous tour. <laughs> acceleration from from any revs it's the complete opposite of an inline four liter bike or something where you have to work for the speed this is like 2000 rpm oh yeah yeah we're off it is just an incredible sensation it feels like every millimeter or degree you twist your right wrist gives you probably three times as much shove up the backside that you're expecting especially in sport mode it's like it's got an unstoppable force punting you along. It's like God has got his yo-yo out and he's smacked you up the arse with it. It's an epic, epic engine. Can I notice the extra 15 horsepower? No, because I've not been near the top end where that all happens yet, because you just don't ever need to. My God. I don't think there's another motorbike where 2000 RPM feels quite as strong as it does on this. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, other new stuff, the wheels are one kilo lighter, so the handling should be a bit keener, and uh, that's about it really, the paint scheme's changed, all the chrome stuff has been blacked out, so the exhaust headers and all that kind of stuff, uh, because people were wanting to do that anyway, people want the mean black look when they buy these, so try to listen to them, and just turned everything black for us out the factory, you've got bar and mirrors, which are quite clear, I've just done motorway speeds and a bit to get here, but I can confirm that uh, uh, 80 miles an hour, should you ever do that? You feel like a bloody great sail on the Mary Rose or something. It's not going to be the most comfortable long distance cruiser, but it's not about that, is it? But one thing I've always loved about the Rocket 3 is you send it down a twisty road and it rewards you. It doesn't say, oh no, you bought the wrong bike, you muppet. You should have got a street triple. It says, actually, do you know what? I can boogie. And, well, I'll show you. 
It also sounds fantastic. It still sounds like a triple, but it sounds like a big, kind of smooth tractor engine or some kind of big Scania truck engine. Honestly, if you like engines, you'll love this bike because it's like no other. And obviously this engine is unique to the Rocket 3. It's not put in anything else. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> because you've got that absolutely massive rear tire, you can deploy all of the power most of the time unless it's wet and yes it has traction control to look after you so you don't end up making a rocket 3R shaped hole in your grandma's head if you happen to be riding past your grandma's house giving it the berries but oh it's good it is good it's got a 17 inch front wheel i think the 16 inch rear so it's not completely conventional obviously but there really isn't much of a deficit to handling. The steering isn't the fastest because you've got that fat front tyre, but it's still incisive and it holds a line. And once you commit to a corner, it's, it's kind of fine. You can adjust it a little bit. You can use the back brake a little bit. It doesn't require you to relearn how to ride a motorcycle. And I think that is fundamental to this bike's appeal as it does all these silly things without making you take your test again or remember how to do things like go around corners or brake and the Brembo Stylemas do a bloody good job of stopping 300 kilos plus 100 kilos of me <laughs> also it burbles as well on the overrun what what a machine what a lovely thing now this one doesn't have the optional quick shifter I'm okay with that. Clutchless upshifts work just fine on this. And the gearbox isn't isn't a dog. Sometimes with big capacity engines, the gearbox has to be machined like that in a T34 from Russian steel. But actually, uh, of course, it's a Vauxhall driver. They couldn't possibly have seen the motorbike coming at them, admittedly, quite quickly. Yeah, the gearbox is fine. It is really easy to snick up and down the box. There's no hesitation, no recalcitrance, it's buttery smooth. Mm, I like it a lot. Triumph, you've developed this very well. Now Triumph did invite me to an event the other day at a runway near York, I think it was Elvington, where Richard Hammond had his massive crash in that jet-powered dragster, where they were just running these down the runway. And they were all doing well over 150 miles an hour, which having done about two thirds of that, I have to say that's an impressive feat of holding on. <laughs> because I'm just a big Gore-Tex sail on this bike. You've got riding modes, obviously you've got your usual ones, you've got road, sport, uh, rain, and your customizable one. You can turn traction control off, probably wouldn't advise that. I don't see the need personally. It is oh, it's an amazing bike and it is actually reasonably relaxing because as you can see, I'm doing 45 miles an hour, I've just left it in fifth. And I know that if I want to overtake Mr. Blind person in their Vauxhall in front of me, I can just nip out, give it a squirt in fifth, and I will be off down the road. Hello. The back brake's pretty strong as well. I have to say, I've triggered the rear ABS quite easily, manoeuvring this at low speeds on some slightly dodgy roads. And there's a ton of engine braking as well when you go down to first and let the clutch out, but you know. <laughs> When you go from first to second, it is genuinely trying to wheelie. That is so impressive for a bike with a wheelbase of a London bus. And I do actually think it's a very apt time for me to be riding the rocket. Because it's 20 years ago this week that I started university. I'm old. When I started University of Southampton as a gormless undergrad doing an English literature degree. I moved into halls of residence down in Southampton and I had a couple of weird posters on my wall, one of which though was Triumph Rocket 3 post that I bought off this website that just started called eBay. I just got an eBay account and I had a big Rocket 3 poster on my wall. Admittedly, next to one of Puss in Boots from Shrek 2 doing the cute eye thing. I, I, just, I was a bit, I don't know, I think everyone thought I was gay, but I, I liked it. Um, but yeah, it's nice to finally ride one again and still be blown away by what a good bike it is. I really like the second gen of Rocket. They did away with the chintzy leather tasseled look of the first one, which was bedecked in chrome and modified by dubious men who like to do things like spray paint British bulldogs and Princess Diana's uh, inner thigh on it and stuff like that. And it just became an amazing power cruiser. And I guess if you're buying one of these, 
The alternatives really that I would recommend is the Diavel V4 from Ducati. It's similar money to this, it's expensive, but that has, it's lighter, it's got a bit more handling precision, the chassis is a bit more fun than this, but it just doesn't have the stomp. But yes, the Diavel V4 has got more complicated electronics, more sophisticated I should say. It's got a lighter gearbox, slightly quick shift to blipper. It feels like you're riding a more conventional naked bike and that'll be pulling power wheelies and third gear off crests and things whereas this just feels like it weighs so much and it's got a slightly more lethargic power delivery and it's not going to be quite as um, lightning fast this is a this is a different experience one isn't better than the other this is a thug the Diablo is a slightly more lean thug if that makes sense but anyway i'm waffling this has been a very first ride on the triumph rocket 3r storm or storm 3r or stormer um it's been eye-opening it's been a brilliant reintroduction to motorbikes after two weeks off and i'll do a full review of it in the next couple of weeks i've done some more miles on it i've been getting 44 no no hound <laughs> i've not been getting 44 mpg i've been getting 33 mpg but trust me you just don't care when you're riding this it does about 120 miles to a tank it makes great noise it stops well it goes around corners and it will make you smile like someone's been putting sausages in your bottom it is great thank you for watching if you've liked this please hit like subscribe to the motorbike channel i've got a car channel as well if you're bored search for tim roadie drive stuff and i will see you very soon now go down to the comments and tell me how many bikes you'd have to own before you added a rocket to your garage would it be your second bike the third bike or your first bike let me know bye